Welcome to Not Kill Racing Circuit for the Scottish Championship Bike Racing. In this week's programme, it's a 600 Superstocks. It's the biggest grid that we have and it always provides really close two-wheeled action. We also have the Formula 125s in this programme. Now it's a two-day meeting. I'm going to hand it to Dennis and Duncan and they're going to run you through the first day's action. Thank you very much, Joe Tanner, and once again, my name Duncan Vincent, and I'm joined in the commentary box by the lovable Dennis Hobbs. And Dennis, this is the Saturday highlight package from our two-day meeting. You can see weather conditions a little bit iffy on the Saturday morning, and the Formula 125s are the first guys onto the circuit to give us some of their action. We're GP 125s in here as well. A couple of young lads from Ireland, the McGreevies, Corey and Kia, and they were the class of the field, Dennis, absolutely ripping away at the front. But the guys in the Formula 125s from Scotland hanging in tight, very tricky weather conditions, it wasn't easy at all. No, that's right, it was pretty tricky conditions out there and I'm really impressed with the um, McGreevies, like you say, first ever visit to Knock Hill and the lap times we were putting in were really impressive, pulling away from the rest of the field, obviously qualified on pole and second, that's a big high side out of the uh, hairpin and just Cameron, straight. Cameron Coston definitely rung his bell there, got in the gas nice and early in his little Aprilia, did have a little bit of a sore ankle but walked away and we will see him later on but that was quite a big high side. As ever, the Superstock 600s giving us some of the biggest grids we have here in Scotland and some fantastic racing and it was Callum Patterson, a man who's really taken on form since the British Superbike meeting here. He's been quick, he's been getting more and more progress and really Callum Patterson is a man to watch on the turquoise R6 Yamaha. Also out here with Cathal Lafferty who was putting on a fantastic show for us and then with Greg Gilfillan and uh, yeah, enter Greg Gilfillan on Q and exit Greg Gilfillan on Q. Getting a little bit, um, shall we say aggressive or energetic on the brakes here? Yeah, it looked like it was. Oh, <laughs> Greg. <laughs> oh, there was uh, a little bit of a shame he tumbled off like that but yeah, I mean, obviously fantastic ride as a Gilfin and Sporfland, as you can see the rain coming down the background there, making it very tricky for the riders out there, and obviously class of the field in this one, uh, Duncan, was Brian Duncanson. Yeah, Brian. Brian is the man in the Scottish Championship right now, he's still got a nice healthy lead. That's right, and he's been very consistent throughout the course of the season. It was red flag due to monsoon conditions, and uh, away we're going. When it actually started, if you can see through that camera with the rain on it there, a little bit of rain next possibly, and he did. Uh, it was Callum Patterson who got an absolute dynamite start off the front. In fact, it looked maybe a little bit too good, but these weather conditions were very trying for the guys on the, the Super Stock 600s. Everybody on full wet tyres, and really they were just kind of padding their way around, Dennis, to try and find out where the grip levels were. But by the time we got to the hairpin, again, it was Callum Patterson, Ryan Duncanson did come up the inside of young Liam Shellcock and Liam was having a bit of a, a bit of an interesting meeting at this point. Things weren't really going his way. No, that's right, but obviously running uh, second and then obviously just dumped back to third there at the moment, but he was, he was, he was preferring the wet conditions over the drying conditions. Yeah, Cathal Lafferty as well was a man who seemed to have excellent braking power in the rain. Uh, no chance of locking wheels up by the hairpin. He was so strong and uh, we'll catch up with Lafferty as it goes along. But uh, yeah, Callum Patterson and Brian Duncanson at the front. Duncanson did eventually try and take the lead and he succeeded as they went through Scotswing Corner. They're a good move by Brian Duncanson. He's been around quite a long time and that K6 Suzuki that he's on, it's not the newest of bikes out there but uh, it's a very quick one. We did unfortunately then get a rider down at uh, sea curves which brought out the red flags and that was declared a result for these guys you can see they were getting ushered away by the Knock Hill Motorsports Club marshals there more rain followed, a few rivers across the track and one person being ushered off the grid, I think that was young Bethany Polanski but uh, as the lights went on Dennis, the lights soon went off, it was very quick start, quick turnaround by Bob Davis on the button up there and these conditions you know when you're out there on a lot 125 Dennis you've really got to watch because it's very easy to get caught out, especially with the, the, the weight of the like they can aqua plane on puddles and rivers. That's right, I mean obviously one two five, there's not a lot of weight to them, especially with the rads as well, it's quite a light combination, but also these guys got full wet tyres on Duncan and uh, we saw a few of the metric kits out yep. there as well yep. and the, the guys on the metric kits only got the licenses on the actual Saturday morning, so Declan McGilvery and the other one was yeah. Cameron Tenzin Jenkins. I'm impressed with that. That's the top of the head. You can see Dennis Hobbs actually thinking there live in front of me. But yeah, these guys in the metric, it's Declan McGilvery first came to the fore and, and kind of in my view when he did a demonstration on a mini motorbike at the Scottish Motor Show here. And here he is, Declan McGilvery on the, the little metric. You can see the standing kind of water and inside there. Not, that's not very deep. It just looks kind of frightening, especially on the 125 as he makes his way out and uses a bit of the exit curve as well. He wasn't shy, was he, at all? And, and he had so much corner speed and exit speed but we're just getting uh, really 
done in a straight line by the Formula and GP125. Yeah, it was definitely a, a guy once he gets onto a bigger bike, it's going to be a class act. But it was all Corey McGreevy again. You can see him taking a checkered flag there on his RS125 and followed home by his little brother, Kia McGreevy, as well. And everything just going well for those guys having a trip over from Ireland. Uh, 600 race get, went away again, tricky conditions, but then the sun came out, so the track was starting to dry and it, it was drying rapidly as well. So it was very difficult for these guys. Obviously, they had to go out in full wets, but there was that bit. There was going to be a change over transition period, Dennis, where it went from wet tyres to dry, and you were just going to have to, you're just going to have to stick with it. Yeah, that's it. I mean, if you chose the dry tyres, you just got to run with them. If you had the wet tyres, some guys had a bit of a combination on, and it made it a very tricky day in terms of racing. And uh, somebody that's really impressed us over the course of the, the wet river was actually Sammy Tasker making big progress through the field, rather than being towards the rears and obviously mid packing towards the sharp end and, and passing a lot of riders in the process. James Duxbury was another man to keep our eyes on, but yeah, Matt Shellcock, uh, Liam Shellcock, sorry, I was going to say Matt there, Liam Shellcock tipped off at Sea Curves there, got himself up straight away, just the back wandered round, but there's Duxbury there up the inside, and this man was a bit of a revelation, Dennis, uh, the first time we'd kind of seen him at the front and wearing a novice vest, good to see the orange vest at the front, mixing it with these more kind of experienced men, but we've got to remember, Greg O'Fillan's just off his orange vest, and well, he was off the orange bike in, uh, in the earlier race, but uh, yeah, good to see the guys there getting their chance up at the front and really impressing. Us. Yeah, definitely, and also for, for these guys as well, your result is on the, the second of your race result, it's a good slot for the next again race. Yeah, there's Grant Campbell, good overtaking maneuver by Grant Campbell there, got it up the inside of Scotsman and found good grip through the corner, and Grant Campbell, along with Sammy Tasker, they're just making progress absolutely every time they're racing. Yeah, definitely so, and it's, it's good to see, I think we've got Brian Junction back at the sharp and they're just going past one of the slow drives, that might be Matthew Kerr as they go around the hairpin. Didn't give him a lot of room there, did he? Didn't want to run it right across that little bit of water on the inside, but up towards another another checker flag, the last lap flag gets pulled in and Brian Dunkinson got the checker flag, it was a good win by Brian and really was on the crest of a wave for you Dennis, he really was going along well, Callum Patterson was second and Greg Gilfillan coming home in third place, Chris Cook and John Frost. So that brings us basically back up to date. We get to see some live racing now. We've got the grid in front of us here. We've got Jason Vernon, Kai Johnson and Gillian McGaw are the front row of the grid for the Knockhill Motorsports Club 125. You'll notice that both McGreevies have gone. They're not actually going to race in this class. Then they've put them in with the Formula 400s. Just a better speed mix. Yeah, just because of the speed and the, and the impressiveness of them at the first visit to Knockhill, you know, it, it makes more sense to, to put them in with the quicker bikes and make it more interesting. Absolutely does. Nice dry conditions. A little bit of breeze in the air, but here we go. This is going to be a live race. We're waiting on the lights coming on the Beatsons Building Supply Bridge and we await the start for the first race of the day. There's your red lights coming on, and away they go, and Gillian McGaw makes an absolute howler. She just didn't, I don't think she had it in gear there, Dan. Yeah, it looked like she was in neutral when oh. she went to go away from the lights, so she's right on the back foot straight away. She's going to be very last going towards the top of seat curve for the first time. And it looks like the number 77, Jason Vernon, takes the lead. Kai Johnson in second place as it go down through Leslie's towards Scotsman Corner. So Jason Vernon is definitely wanting to put the pressure on Kai Johnson and keep himself at the sharp end. He needs to, doesn't he? He really needs to, because it's all been about Kai Johnson this year, so far he's been the man in the form of the 125s and remember that's all about Kai he's catching Jason Vernon here and Jason really does have to do something special he needs to pull a bit of a rab out the hat and see if he can hold off this young man on the number 19 bike as they both come in towards the hip and for the first time knee out breaking very very late on these little light 125cc Aprilias and there goes Johnson tries to get back up the inside and you've got to remember Kai's a lot lighter than Jason as well isn't he he's a lot smaller yeah you can see the frame the, the size there. I think in, in terms of overall lap times are very equal Duncan but Kai Johnson and just seems to be able to just keep them laps going lap after lap and the, and the, the much more straight line speed he's got is definitely helping him I mean obviously Jason Vernon there a little bit later on the brakes and towards the top of seat curve holding that lead off but Kai Johnson able to get level with him if not in front of him on the straights yeah a very brave man on the brakes is Jason Vernon but Kai Johnson is all over the back of him and there's Declan McGilvery we pick him up he's just behind Ashley Robson as they go through class and Jelly McGaw's got ahead of both those people so after a bit of a dreadful start Dad Mark won't be too happy about that one but I'm pretty sure she'll not have the thing in neutral on the line again but there's a change of position for the lead then as they come through the John Iwish chicane in towards Clark Johnson has stamped his authority and he's taken the lead from Jason Vernon he got a much superior drive out of the chicane there, and it was really drove past him well before they even got to the exit 
point, entrance points towards Clarkson, so impressive stuff. Yeah, good stuff from these guys. The kids showing us that they have got a lot of talent. And remember, we've also got Cameron Cost out there. Now, he had a big high side at the, the hairpin as oh, Robson tries to go up the inside the McGaw there, but uh, great. Uh, he's back out there after that high side. I think you've recalled, I think both Costons were down at the hairpin. I think, yeah. Within, you, within the lap of each other. <laughs> no, uh, they're making a family affair at the hairpin as uh, Robson's still looking to try and get up the inside the McGaw. And this is a, a great battle here. Gillian on the number five bike has come back through the field very, very well. And look at that little Betrick again. Absolutely ringed at the back there. We need to get the Dremel out, doesn't he? We said that. Yeah, that's it. Just trying to give himself a little bit more horsepower. It's Kai Johnson at the front, obviously pulling away. Well clear from the field, but just looking off, off the pitch, it sort of looks like Ashley Robson is a lot quicker through the twisty stuff than Julian McGaw. Julian McGaw just seems to have a little bit more straight line speed, which is helping her out. Here we come. It's all about Kai Johnson. He takes the checker flag and he takes the win, but here's the battle for the girls. Robson tries to go round down. See the McGaw. Is she going to manage to hold that as it comes from the hairpin? No, Julian McGaw cuts her nose off. It's a very brave move and a big shake of the head from Ashley there. She's not happy about losing that position, but what a cracking result there. Kai Johnson wins from Jason Vernon. Cameron Corson, who we didn't actually see on screen, gets third. Gillian McGaw, Ashley Robson, and Declan, the first of the metricates. Declan McGillivray comes home in a fine sixth position. Back down to Joe Tanner in the pit lane. Kai, another great win. Um, it wasn't so easy this time, though. You had to work for that. Yeah, uh, yeah. I couldn't get up uh, Jason at some of the corners, so once I got past him, I just went for it and then just won it, so it was good. <laughs> some good, consistent, fast laps once you were past them as well. Uh, yeah, so that was great. <laughs> Jason, uh, second place, and uh, I was just saying there to Kai, a strange tyre choice. Yeah, it was, uh, it didn't work very well, it's just we thought, we were hoping it was going to rain, so we thought if it rains... Right, half and half, a wet on the front and a dry on the back. Yeah, but it didn't work very well, so I'll just have to go and fill dries for the next race. Third place, a great solid result, and um, what tyres did you have on, because there was some strange tyre choices going on in that race? Yeah, it was just intermediate, I just had normal, uh, luckily it wasn't raining, because I didn't have really much tread on my tyres left. So it's quite good that it was dry. Happy enough with the third position or could you do any more later on today? Uh, no, not really. I wouldn't say I could catch them on the straights, but I did get close to them on the corners, but not really much because it was far in front uh, later on in the race. Welcome to another episode of Racing No Filter. Joining me in sunny California, Bill Wood, and down in sunny Florida, Peter Keen. We're going to take a look at some of the products HPD has created for the 2012 Honda Civic. And specifically, we're going to show you how to install an adjustable sway bar. Until then, folks out there, you take care. Want to keep up with all the racing action at the track? Well, download the new Go Racing TV iPhone and Android app. And remember to like us on Facebook and follow us on Twitter. Race number one from the Superstock 600. It's our biggest grid. It always, always gives us great, great racing. And our championship leader is the number 73 machine of Brian Duncanson. I'm going to have a quick chat with him. Pole position. Brian, pole position. You're short of a few mechanics here. Uh, yeah, they're just catching up, I think. But uh, I always look at well, so... Hopefully get some more wins today. Now, yesterday's races, we've seen a few highlights of them already. Uh, the weather conditions, I've never seen anything like it. I think the first race I watched, it was completely bone dry, and then all of a sudden it was like monsoon weather conditions. Then a minute later, it was completely dry again. You've got to be happy with the reasonably clear skies we've got here. Uh, yeah, I'm not really bothered whether it's wet or dry. Just one or the other would be good. You know, we get a bit, uh, a bit fed up changing wheels yesterday. So we'll see how today goes. Thanks very much, Joe Tanner, and good to hear from Brian Duncanson. So, Callum Patterson, Liam Shellcock, and Chris Cook are the front row of the grid for the 600 Superstocks. Uh, Duncanson, Lafferty, and coming. Keep your eyes on Cathal Lafferty, uh, another one of the Lafferty clan coming over from Ireland, Dennis. An extremely quick, extremely talented man. Yeah, definitely. He's been uh, dominant, especially in the hairpin. He looks very, very strong. Doing that's definitely his strongest part of the track, and, and still struggling to find his way around in places. He's yeah. still learning the circuit. We've got to remember, it's only his what, probably third visit to the to the track, and it's a very technical circuit here at Knockhill. But being very brave on the brakes in the rain is one thing. But here we go. We're under starters' orders. Bob Davis has his finger on the button. You will see the lights come on the Beatsons Bridge. Here we go. Red lights are on. Our way they go, and it's a cracking start from the first two, and a, just a terrible start. But Chris Cookie did not get that little Kawasaki rolling, and let's see who 
takes the lead as we head down towards St. Curves. It looks like Duncanson's going to peel in front of Greg O'Fillan, and he does. He goes down through Leslie's, and there we see Duck Murray just going through Leslie's as well as we get in towards that tight right hander of Scotsman. Yeah, what was Chris Cook doing there, Then He was sleeping again. Yeah, he just missed the lights by a complete mile. He wasn't waiting with the clutch, was he? And uh, like I said, that's cost him a lot of places. He's down through the field there. But out the front, Brian Duncanson looking nice and comfortable, and obviously he was a man in the wet conditions on the Saturday, but now we're into the Sunday race, and it could be a different thing altogether. Yeah, John Frost. Frosty. Yeah, Frosty up the inside. We've been missing John Frost, haven't we? Yeah, it was Angus Mernsey was going up the inside as well, wasn't it? At uh, Clark's Corner. So. That's an ageing battle, that two between those guys. But into the hairpin, Callum Patterson goes past Greg O'Fillan, and very, very easy. Greg a little bit tame on the brakes there, maybe. Just going to take a couple of laps to get himself wound up. Frosty's over the back of Duxbury now as they come up the main street. Pit boards go out, and they go the 600s absolutely howling over the top of the hill there. And uh, a good view of somebody's hand there, and a bit of a wood, which certainly will be in the front of that. But let's pick up the bikes as they go through first corner. There's Chris Cook in fourth position. Frosty's got a header all that battle. He's got a header laugh at him. And Sammy Tasker on the back. Sammy Tasker, as you said, Dennis, is making big inroads in the 600s. Yes, yeah, she's starting to get there. I think obviously gaining confidence with the bike and carrying corner speed. And, and this for a driver and very impressive stuff at the moment. But Caffel Laverty there, I think a little bit further, just went past Angus Mearns. And uh, we know he was very strong in the wet conditions. And I believe he can be as strong in the dry. He's obviously just ironed up John Frost ahead of him now. So let's see if we can try and tag him towards the back of John Frost and make more progress. Definitely needs to get a good run through Clark Corner, but if anybody's going to get a good run, it's going to be that pink 97 bike. Look at Sammy, tucks right in the back there. She's already getting a slipstream. She's absolutely tiny. She weighs next to nothing, but she drives this thing so well through Clark Corners. Laverty goes up the inside of Angus Mearns, and that looked like it had a hat and written over it. He uses a bit of exit curve, and uh, yeah, he shows Angus absolutely no respect whatsoever. A bit of exit curve. <laughs> yeah, there wasn't much exit curve left to use there, was there? But let's pick back up with the leaders, because Callum Patterson has caught up with Brian Duncanson, he's now all over the back of him as they come up through Clark Corner and head towards the hairpin. What do you think, Dan? Is he going to make a move? Is he going to have a stab? Yeah, well, we saw Callum Patterson at the uh, BSB meeting up here, Duncan. He was very, very strong and, and really impressive lap times. And they're still a little bit off what they were doing there. They were down into the 52s, I believe. Um, but he's, uh, he's obviously uh, going around there now. His 53 6 is best lap of the race so far and very equal with Brian Duncan at the front. But you've got to think Callum Patterson probably wants it more to a point, and Brian Duncan's leading the championship, so he might be a little bit more sensitive. Yeah, Sean Cooper doing a, uh, Dan, doing a good <laughs> overtaking manoeuvre at the hairpin there as well, very late on the brakes and just head towards the apex. So these guys all just ticking off the laps, making their way through, but the battle for the front, well, over the last course of this lap, Brian Duncanson has just stretched Callum Patterson, if that was a wee mistake, somewhere along the line by Callum Patterson. But these guys, uh, Patterson, Gilfillan, you know they're all racing against the guy that's been about for a while. Brian Duncanson isn't old, by the way, I, I give him a hard time for him some great hair, but he's not an old chap, but he has been around and raced for a long time, so he's got a lot of experience as we see Cooper going through Clark Corners. That Graham Perry right up behind him as well there. And then we've got the returning Liam Shelcock also. I obviously Shelcock haven't started from the back of the group yeah. because he was on the floor earlier on, wasn't he? Checker flag goes out and it is Duncanson winning from Callum Patterson. A good dominant race win from Brian Duncanson. But here's this battle arriving there, but it's Frost, Laverty, Tasker ahead of Merns. Angus Merns will not be happy with that. And who's got the drive towards the line? Can Frosty hold it? Yes! Laverty's left, right, left up over the main straight but he holds position also. Wow. Race and a half that, wasn't it? A good finish to that one. So here we go. Uh, Brian Duncanson wins from Callum Patterson. Greg O'Fell and Chris Cook. Frosty, Laverty, Tasker and Mearns all coming over in an absolute clump and a half. Let's head back down to Joe in the pit lane. And the winner of the Superstock 600, Brian Duncanson. Um, great race. Early doors. It looked like Callum had the, had the upper hand on you, but you were just waiting. Yeah, I kind of got away at the start and uh, thought I would just kind of set the pace where I was comfortable, but Callum came past and he wasn't looking slow, so uh, he made a slight mistake and nipped by him, and that was it, race over. He's found some good pace lately, hasn't he? Uh, yeah, definitely. He was going quite well on the damp yesterday, but penalised for a jump start, so uh, he'll definitely be on for some results today, I think. Callum, second place again. This first win can't be far away. Well, I'm desperate for it. It's probably been about a year since I've last won on the last bike, so I'm desperate for it. <laughs> When the leader came past you, did you think you could have another go back at him? Because at one point in the race, it looked like you were storming to the front and you were going to stay there, but he just came back past. Brian's a hard rider. I know he sort of starts off a bit slower, but as the race goes on, Brian gets faster. I knew he was coming, and I just wanted to try and hold him off. I've had a chance to go back on, but again, I'm happy to finish this because the last few weekends I've fallen off. So. Third place, Greg O'Fillan. Um, I'm talking to you just before we went on air there about the, uh, the BSB weekend that you had, those great wins, yeah. and you're back on form again today with a great podium. Yeah, uh, I think I took two victories that weekend and then last race I was leading it and had a slight crash. 
play pull a gap on my brother a bit. I just try to get my confidence back up after a few crashes in the last couple of races. But it's getting there and looking forward to the next race where I can hopefully win that one. Well, great hearing from the podium, guys. Yeah, thank you very much, Joe. And yeah, Greg O'Fillan, just trying to get confidence back then. But yeah, never mind that. We're back on with Formula 125s. Give us a grid. Yeah, Kai Johnson on pole position from Jason Vernon, Cameron Carson. Row 2, we've got Julie McGaw, Ashley Robson and Declan McGilvery on his little metric kit. Yep. Then we've got Tam... Cameron Tenzin Jenkins. There you go. Oh, Tam, we'll call him Tam. Yeah. Well, good stuff. <laughs> so we're already under starter shots from Bob Davis, and away we go. The lights go out, and Jilly McGall makes a cracking start this time. That was definitely in first gear, but it looked like it was all again about Kai Johnson as they head down towards seat curves, and it is then. Look at that. He's leading from the front, and this is what Jason Vernon does not want to see. He does not want to see him in the start at the beginning in the lead because he really needs to try and be in there holding him up. And that's another metric. Is that Jenkinson at the front there? Nothing. That's it. Could well be actually. Oh, he's run off. He's Wide, he's running wide then is he going to make that back on the track because the track kinks of the way and he's heading towards the tyre wall we'll hopefully pick that up from another angle as they come through the top of the John I wish he came because still see young Declan on the metric out there absolutely ringing that thing isn't he yeah definitely try, ran it very very hard but uh, I think Cameron Jenkins there was already up to third place so he obviously got a belter of a start coming through the field there uh, and unfortunately just made a bit of a mistake and run wide but this looks like it's going to be a good battle that's there we've got Ashley Robson in the mix with Jill McCaw Cameron Corson and obviously Declan McGill on the metric it looks like we're going to have a four way scrap for this one so you're belted off a start that can kind of go with my clump as they all go across the start finish line at the end of the race here so here we come through the hairpin for the first time of asking Robson having a look at Coston there but it was not to be Kai Johnson already you can see him just disappearing up over the hill and underneath the Beatson's building supply bridge as he clicks off another lap there a few worried faces on the pit wall we can see them but back at the chicane Jelly McGaw I tell you what Jelly McGaw has really started to come of age in his last couple of meetings she's getting her getting her kind of mojo as Bruce Bunny would say and doing a cracking effort here but Robson tries to go up inside the Coston and it sticks at Clark good move well, that was a very nice manoeuvre and just watching when we're playing out watching testing as well actually Robson very quick through the twisty stuff Duncan but yeah. her bike is definitely not quick in a straight line and she's hampered see, in yeah. that you can see that just now well pointed out there Dennis Hobbs as Coston just drives past on the way towards Ebon he's going to get that thing slow down going in there quite hot but uh, yeah nice to get back to the apex that's where he had a massive high side yesterday and really did ring his bell but look at McGilvery still hanging on the back there there's no man later on the brakes in the circuit today than Declan McGilvery no that's for sure and the corner speed that he carries on the metric is, is quite something else and uh, doing a good job with the uh, mini motors of Alan McIntosh absolutely Tosh and the Pelini guys at mini motors there as Coston runs a bit wide going through state curves and that hampers him through Leslie's and then in towards Scotsman you can see Ashley Robson just catching up to the back of Jilly McGaw then. Yeah I mean from previous races you would have thought Cameron Corson would have been ahead of this group and away of it but he's having a hard time in terms of getting through with the likes of Jilly McGaw and Ashley Robson ahead then it's going to be a close fought battle all the way to the flag by looks right now Duncan. I think we'll come up to lap the other Corson Fraser Corson as well as Cameron again goes past on the main street and that's well pointed out Ashley Robson's bike doesn't look like it has the top end speed and you know there's but it being very small top end speeds, you've got to have everything you can have in these little things. Yeah, she gets good drive out of the corners onto the start finish straight, but then, like I say, just loses out once the bikes start to open up. And it's not as if she's she's a lot bigger than the other girls and other boys around her, you know, they're very equal. Absolutely, so then a little bit of maybe cylinder head work or something needed done on that little apparently there as they go past Fraser Costin and look at the corner speed Jill and McGaw takes through state curves and it actually forces her very far out to the left hand side. But we've got Cameron Costin who has got to try and make a pass. That's a good move by Costin. He goes, go the undercut towards Butchers. That's one of Dennis Hobbs' favourite moves, old undercut there. Yeah, for sure. It's a nice, nice, well move, uh, plan manoeuvre and uh, probably held up by his brother there. I think he's, uh, he's got the intercom <laughs> system on there and just telling him where to position himself to make an advantage. But Cameron Corson, Jimmy got having a dive up the inside, but Ashley Robson around the outside at Clarks. You don't see that very often. Very, very brave move there. Now, maybe Gillian just caught herself unaware there. She, she looked like she was going to have a lunge into Clark and maybe just checked up a little bit too much. And you're right there, right round outside Ashley Robson. But there you go. It's all about him. That boy there is just going past the camera. Kai Johnston. Is that him going into his last lap? But it looks at things the, the flag was hanging out there but this battle is still a raging around the outside of the airpin and Jilly McGaw shows Ashley Robson absolutely no mercy whatsoever and that's the edge of the track almost like Ashley Robson was in the wrong gear coming out yeah. the airpin and I lost all of the drive as well as a side by side but Kai Johnson coming out to take another well deserved victory at the sharp end unchallenged right the way through Duncan absolutely up towards the checker flag there and he takes another well deserved victory as you say Dennis Kai Johnson is the man Jason Vernon it's not through lack of trying it no, is not through lack of trying you know the lap times there's only point one of a 
second between the fastest laps between them, but Here just unable to do it. And the airplane Costa goes round the outside of McGaw, and that's a brilliant move by Cameron Costa. They obviously still got a lot, a lot of uh, uh, kind of confidence here, but McGaw tries to draft him towards the line, and Costa just manages to hold on by, what, well, tenth of a second then? Yeah, less than a tenth of a second. So Freaky, pretty blame close. Me. I mean, uh, Cameron Costa, uh, excellent in coming through to third, but really well fought battle between uh, Julian McGaw and Asher Robson. Kai Johnson once again takes the victory from Jason Vernon and Cameron Costin. Jilly McGaw, Ashley Robson and the first of the metrics again, Declan McGilvery with Cameron Jenkins and Fraser Costin rounding out the top eight. Let's head back down to Joe Tanner in the pit lane. Kai, another win and there was some great scrapping going on behind you but you had it all easy at the front. Uh, yeah, it was just really good and then I just kept going for it so... Oh. Good consistent laps? Uh, yeah, it says I've got uh, the best lap there, so it looks like I've done well. Jason, second place. Uh, Kai was 10 seconds up the road. What can you do to bridge this gap? He's going so quick. Um, I'm not really sure. It was just at the start, um, going in, uh, down uh, Duffet. Um, I put it up a gear instead of going down a gear when I was getting my foot round. So I, drop, I had to drop two, then I run wide. So he just got that gap and expanded on it. Cameron, third place, a uh, fairly settled result there. Fairly easy ride to third. Yeah, well, uh, I had a battle with Gillian and Ashley, which was quite good. Except for they've got the, a better bike on the straights than I do, so I had to break late and actually racing out early on the corners. With so much racing going on in the world, you'd have to be a four-headed monster to keep up with it all. Luckily, we have that. Join Peter Keane, Bill Wood, Errol Tucker, and their guest driver analyst each week for an opinionated look at the news coming out of the racing world. Remember, it's GoRacingTV.com for all your racing and video needs. Welcome back to Knock Hill. So we're on the grid for the Superstock 600 race. Brett Nickel, you can see him at the very back there. Brett Nickel just uh, getting himself back into position and we are going to be going here. Uh, Dennis, tricky conditions. Yeah, it's been dry, it's been wet and now it's kind of in between. It's, it's neither all at the moment, Duncan, so it's going to be uh, about being nice and smooth with those wet tyres and try and save them to the end. Let's see how we get on here. So Cameron Patterson, you can see Callum Patterson, sorry, Liam Shellcock and Chris Cook. Yeah, give me a dig in the ribs then. I deserved it for that one. Green flag at the back. So here we go. We're going to go racing. We have got the starter on the podium on the left-hand side. Again, Bob Davis is the man in charge. Let's go on. Let's go off. It's quite, that's quite a long start there for him, a long hold. And a way to go down towards seat curves. And who is going to have the whole shot? It's Patterson from Duncanson. Shellcock and Gilfillan. Gilfillan goes round the outside. Very brave move as they go through Les's and pull the bikes back up for Scotsman. Lots of overtaking. And we've got a rider down. And who's that? That's Sean Cooper and Grant Campbell. Yes, it is. Definitely. It's a pair of them down. So. Well, obviously it looks like Grant Campbell's perfectly okay there. It looks like Sean could make himself a bit of a dull one. Yeah, bikes in the middle of the road. Let's hope they can uh, get that cleared up as incoming Greg Gill filling up the inside. Tries to follow Brian Duncanson through. And Cathal Lafferty right across the wet patch there. Very, very brave then. It looks worse than what it is from here, Duncan. It's only just a very small bit of wall that's on, laying on the circuit surface there. And it's actually maybe it's not a bad thing in terms of keeping the tyres nice and cool. I tell you what, well, this could be a great clear up job by the marshals down at State Curves here. If they've managed to move those two bikes off the circuit, which they have, fantastic job by the marshals. Well done, guys. As Greg Gilfillan, did he just overtake under a yellow flag then? I think he did because there's a green flag at Scotsman there, so we'll have to see if there's any some sort of infringement that comes out in that. Uh, spotted on camera by, uh, by us here. Yeah, I, was, I was just wondering what was going on there, but Greg Gilfillan, after his interview on in the, the previous race, Duncan, he said he's getting his confidence back and he was going out to win this one. Well, very confident going around the outside of somebody through Leslie's there, so on we go towards the hairpin. Gil Fillin now right up behind Brian Duncanson. Brother Sean not here this weekend, but he's about to see Greg take the lead, and he does a good move there. Just shows Brian Duncanson the edge of the track and doesn't give him any room to get through the new. What was happening in the background? Yeah, Cathal Laverty was going up the inside. I think it was either Chris Cook further back, so he's making uh, progress through the field there. Yeah, and look at the front now. Greg Gil Fillin has stretched his legs, and who's that? It's Callum Patterson now has Brian Duncanson so Brian 
Hines maybe just thinking about championship here and behind him he's going to have to watch because Cathal Lafferty is the next man coming yeah, in biggest thing to like to say that the track's drying out all these guys are on wet tyres they're all searching for the wet part of the circuit to try and keep the tyres nice and cool he's maybe trying to be sensible keeping it nice and smooth as we see Stuart Jackson there coming in towards a hairpin yeah Mark Herta is just in front of him as well Stuart Jackson on the Jackson's bikes, bike of Kelty difficult to actually see that but there goes Stuart up the main straight and just trying to get some confidence back in that little R6 Yamaha but back at the front it is still a battle well, it's a battle for third place really now isn't it because Lafferty comes up and says has he got Cook he has good move and Liam Shellcock again after tipping off in the earlier race on the Saturday Liam Shellcock making good progress here then yeah Liam Shellcock looking strong but Cathal Abbott almost into a podium slot there now in fourth position oh is that, is that 50 pence on the table you think that's going to happen do you poor Cathal's about to have the, the misfortune of the commentator's curse but he's on one wheel as he hits the brakes with the hairpin in the way oh we've got a bit of a Rossi leg out the side and he gets past Brian Duncanson there bit of a block pass but Brian knew he was coming and he's hard on the gas out of the hairpin so Cathal Lafferty gets himself up into is that third position now yeah it's in the third place now wow. so at the front we've got Gil Finnan and then we've got uh, the machine of Calm Patterson and Sammy Tasker going up the inside of Matthew Kerr down there at the hairpin Matthew Kerr having a strong ride in this one Duncan yes isn't he Matthew Kerr's quite surprised and actually sitting, sitting about 12th 13th position right now battling with Sammy Tasker now do his confidence a world of good but there goes your leader Greg Gilfill and then Callum Patterson Cathal Lafferty though hard. oh dear oh dear that's very very close on the brakes of the hairpin oh did Chris Cook touch the back marker there oh, my heart's in my mouth then and your mouth's wide open I just can't understand why they went to the outside of the rider <laughs> in towards the hairpin instead of the inside but they managed to both get through nice and safe that was Matthew Collins getting a bit of a wake up call from the two leaders yeah, that was a, or the two third place guys that was a little bit uh, a little bit of a shame though wasn't it as Cook has a go at Lafferty in towards Scotsman and he passes him and he passes him very well but Lafferty's back on the inside because Cook goes in that little bit too hot so I think, I think either way if Chris Cook gets in front of Cathal Laverty, Laverty has definitely got the legs into the hairpin such as his uh, pace and his prowess on the brakes really strong yeah look at the, look at the style of Greg Gilfillan it's moving about the brakes doesn't seem to bother the young man does it up towards the checker flag it's a good victory for Greg Gilfillan I think Oh, I think there's a checker flag up there. I didn't see it flying about. Gilfillan wins the race from Patterson and Cathal Lafferty. It's Grant Campbell on his feet on the left there, and you can see Sean Cooper in the blue. Okay, so the grid, or the, the results, Dennis, thank you very much, was Greg Gilfillan, Callum Patterson, Cathal Lafferty. Uh, Chris Cook, Brian Duncan, and Liam Shellcock. So let's hand back down to Joe Tanner for the post-race interviews. And the 600 Superstock winner, Greg Gilfillan, what a great, great race that was. Yeah, that was good. After yesterday's result when it was kind of drying up, I came from 15th on the grid down to 2nd, so I knew I was getting these, good in these conditions. And I just kept my head down and managed to come away with the win. Callum was so close. At one point, he pulled out on the start, finished straight to pass you going into the first corner. The next lap round, there was you, a backmarker, and him. So I'm guessing the backmarker must have got in his way. Yeah, I seen him. I seen his front end come up the inside of me, so after he didn't past me out of that, I just kept my head down and pushed a little bit harder, then when the black markers came up I just tried to get ahead of them. Second place, Callum, I'm starting to feel a little bit sorry for you because I was convinced that that was your first win, especially when you pulled out to pass him up the start, finish straight with a few laps to go, but I'm guessing the black markers ruined it. No, Sean was taking, sorry, Greg was riding a lot harder than I was, so he was taking a bit more chances, so that's why he won obviously, but he sure he was quick on the track, but I was expecting Brian to come through and Brian actually finished fourth, so... And a famous name, Laverty, for bike racing. Uh, third place, great result. Uh, tricky conditions, though. Yeah, it wasn't too bad. There was a dry line coming up halfway through the circuit. Um, parts were wet, parts were dry, and there was a couple of guys in front getting slides, and was kind of keeping an eye on them. And then once they made a mistake, it was, I was able to tag onto them, and just I was my strong, my strong point was the hairpin. I was passing everybody in there, and uh, Joe Cook was pushing me the whole race. And he was alongside you a few yeah, times at the start finish street. He had passed me about two or three times, and I just and it seemed to always nip up, nip up the inside of him, and. Uh, but he was pushing, I, just, I couldn't wait to see the last lap flag and eventually came out and thank God. So great hearing from the top three there as the 125s leave the holding area and it is 125 time again. It's Kai Johnson, Jason Vernon and Cameron Costin on the front row of the grid then. Jillian Miggle, Ashley Robson and Declan McGilvery are the row number two. So let's see how we get on here. This is going to be quite interesting because Kai Johnson, can he sweep the 125s this weekend? What do you think then? Yeah, well, it's looking like it. I think he's just been consistent with his lap times. So I know he's probably still got to find a couple of seconds to match what Lewis Rollo's been doing around here previously. Absolutely. Green flag at the back. So let's see the Beatson's Build and Supply Bridge. The lights will come on in just a second and then we'll have the 125s thundering down towards the first corner. See it curves and away they go and Ashley Robson doesn't make a good start there. Oh, and that's Cameron 
Is that Jenkinson just stalled, is that stalled on the grid, do you think? Yeah, it looks like he, yeah, he got away and then obviously just stalled the bike out, so he was trying to bump it to get it going again as we look at Gillian McCorn and look at uh, Cameron Corson ahead there as they're going through Scotsman Corner for the first time. But once again, it's all about Kai Johnson. He is at the front of this field ahead of Jason Vernon and Cameron Corson. So Gillian McGaw got a better start that time. She'll be happy. She's kind of got a, a bike between her and Ashley Robson. And you can see how much the circuit's drying here as well. Yeah. Knockout Duncan is totally bone dry there and out and using all the curves, no spray whatsoever. And uh, we're looking at Julian McGall there chasing down Cameron Corson ahead. And then we've got uh, the metric of Declan McGilvery before we get Ashley Robson. So Ashley Robson's got a lot of work to do in this one. Yeah, Declan does try very hard, but he's, he's, he's really at his limit on that little bike here. But oh, into third place goes Julian McGall as Dennis points towards the TV screen. And it is McGall, but round the outside goes Cameron Corson. He's lost absolutely no confidence after having a big high side there on the Saturday. It really was an egg beater, but up the main straight go the 125s. These guys, just very young, very, very young, but showed some cracking race craft, Dennis. Yeah, it's great to see as well, you know, that we're learning all the time. We've got to, I suppose, remember, pinch ourselves sometimes. It's only been the first or second year of racing. As McGaw goes up the inside of Coston, but no, Coston is very, very ruthless away. He closes the door and just chops across the front of Gillian there. Carrying nice sweeping one, two, five yeah. lines, which is carrying the corner spear through the corner. So Gillian McGaw, she's going to do that. She needs to be a little bit further up the inside and just off almost a forceful pass. And Declan McGillivray holding off Ashley Robson as we speak behind these guys. That's a very, very impressive ride from that youngster on that 80 cc metric bike remember the 125 Aprilia's are 125's and the metric is an 80cc bike so as you can see he's getting gobbled up on the main straight there but watch how late this young man can break as they're coming towards the hairpin as the leaders are making their way through just now will he go back past up the inside yes he's very very late he's coming over the wet patch on the inside oh it's close dear me Heart rate through the roof. That was I was like a Gary Stag man. I, I, I thought it was almost going to be a sidecar. <laughs> yeah. Metric and an Aprilia glued together. It's a fine head of hair there on the pit wall as the guys go past. And just looking there that uh, Asher Robson, second fastest person on track. So Kai Johnson quickest. Then we've got uh, Asher Robson before Jason Vernon on that last lap. Ah, interesting, interesting. We go past Costin as they go through Butchers up towards that John R. Rear chicane. And Jilly McGaw, yep, she's getting a hang of riding this 125 and there's a bike on the ground. That's Declan McGilvery on the, the metric kit. Declan gets up and trudges away from that. Marshalls won't have a problem picking that up. Could probably stick it under their arm and there we go. <laughs> That's how you move a metric kit. Don't you like that? I thought they'd have picked the front wheel up as well. Yeah, I know. So Declan tips off at the hairpin, but a rider is 100% okay. Kai Johnson goes over the crest hill. Jason Vernon will see that, and that'll just be annoying him, won't it? Just be eking out all the time. As Declan smiling under that RI helmet there. What do I need? I need a 125, Dad. Yeah, sh shaking his head. He said the Dremel's not done the job. <laughs> so as Cameron Costin goes back past Jilly McGaw at Butchers and gets back past his little brother there also. Oh, what a well-timed manoeuvre then. That's got to be intercom system. I'm sure that's <laughs> happened twice now over the course of this weekend. And here comes Kai Johnson. He goes past Bethany Polanski as he comes through the hairpin. And Kai Johnson, it has been a fantastic day's racing or weekend racing for this man. He really is the man of the, the meeting so far. Uh, can anybody have an answer to him? I don't know, but we've got a free rider scrap going on. We've got Cameron <laughs> Corson, we've got Gillian McGaw, and then we've got oh, Ashley Robson. Ashley Robson, like you say, she's been very quick, second fastest person on track for a lot of this race, Duncan, and she's right in the mix for the podium position. Yeah, Cameron's going to have to get a wriggle on here, or he's going to get done because up the inside almost goes uh, goes young Ashley, and Gillian McGaw seemed a bit slow, a bit tame on the exit of Scotsman there. And you can see the corner speed. Ashley Robson's nearly running to the back of them through all the corners there, but like you say, onto the straights where she's definitely losing out. Yeah, absolutely. So let's hope we can get some good TV pictures of the, those guys coming in towards the open as Kai Johnson goes up the main street again towards the checker flag. It has been all about Kai Johnson. In the background, we see Jason Verna coming up, but we want to just see this battle coming in because here they all arrive and they've got a metric in the middle of it. There's, there's legs and bikes going everywhere, but it's going to be Jelly McGaw that holds on to take a fine third place. There was definitely contact there, I think, between Ashley Robson and Cameron Carson, and a uh, pretty exciting finish for that one. So, Kai Johnson wins from Jason Vernon, Jelly McGaw and Cameron Costin with Robson, Jenkins, Costin and Polanski, your top eight. Let's head back down to Joe Tanner in the pit lane to find out what the top three's thoughts are. Kai, another win, but um, a dry race that turned wet right at the very end. Uh, yeah, I just kept, it started, I just got a good start again and just kept going for it until it was an off car. And a second place man home, um, tricky conditions, a dry race that ended with a, a good shower of rain. Yeah, I was hoping it was going to be raining earlier in the race, so then we got stopped to put uh, wet tyres on because I was going quite well no wet yesterday because I got two wins beating Kai, so I was hoping for that to go again to plan today. 
Jillian, third place. It's good to see a lady on the podium. Yeah, I just got a good enough start and then held away and then I had really good battles with Cameron and Ashley all day. And then um, this Cameron kept getting me correct the hairpin, but the last hit, that last race, I just managed to hit, uh, hold him. So the championship for the one 2 5 sees Kai Johnson, clear leader from Jason Vernon, with Jill McGon moves herself up into third place ahead of Ashley Robson. Lewis Rollo still fifth, we've not seen him very much, with Jenkinson, McGillivray and Page, your top eight for the one 2 fives. Want to keep up with all the racing action at the track? Well, download the new Go Racing TV iPhone and Android app. And remember to like us on Facebook and follow us on Twitter. Welcome to another episode of Racing No Filter. Joining me in sunny California, Bill Wood, and down in sunny Florida, Peter Keene. We're going to take a look at some of the products HPD has created for the 2012 Honda Civic. And specifically, we're going to show you an install and adjustable sway bar. Until then, folks out there, you take care. In the holding bay for the 600 Superstock race, we predicted the rain. We thought it was going to come halfway through the race, but if you swing around and have a look outside into the pit lane, you'll see it's arrived a lot sooner than we thought it was going to. And it's not just a little bit of rain, it's uh, Malaysian style monsoon rain that we can see. But if we head back towards the front row, you'll see what they're faced with now is changing, uh, changing tires, wheels and tires. They all had the dry weather tire on, and if you look on the far left hand side, you'll see a, a typical dry weather tire. It's basically cut slick, and that's what they'd use in the dry. And then right next to it on the ground here, you'll see the difference with the wet weather tire. Now, the rain that's fallen at the minute, if you look into the pit lane again, you'll see you wouldn't want to go out in that. Because of the standing water, even with these wet weather tires, that's too much rain for these tires at the moment. But the way the weekend's been going, this is surely going to disappear. Hopefully, the drainage at Knock Hill is the best in the country, and that will drain this water away. And it's probably going to be dry in 20 minutes. Short delay. Hopefully, we'll get started soon when this rain starts to disappear a little bit. I'll hand it back to Dennis and Duncan. These guys are going to talk you through the start of the race. Yes, a slight shower has passed over Knock Hill, Dennis, and uh, we're okay. We're nice and dry where we are, but these guys, it's wet tires. Unfortunately, time, mm -hmm. because it, just as we were about to go out of the pit lane, Duncan, it was bone dry. They all had dry tires on, and then, like, say, the heavens over. So the mechanics, hats up to the mechanics, they've done a fantastic job of making sure they managed to get the wheels changed and everything else and we're uh, hopefully going to have a cracking final race for the Superstock 600s. Greg Gilfillan from Callum Patterson from Cathal Lafferty mm -hmm. is the front row. We wait for a green flag at the back and look at that big menacing cloud but as Joe Tanner said, it's probably going to be dry within 20 minutes. Here we go, we're under starter's orders and we're going to have the start in literally a couple of seconds. You can see the guys all making their way off the grid and here we go, who's going to get the jump down towards state curves? Everybody Everybody away, no stalling, everybody in gear, and let's pick up leaders as they come down towards state curves, and it is, is that Gil Fillin? I think it was Gil Fillin going through, big wobble for Cathal Lafferty there, Brian Duncan said, what a huge lead for Greg Gil Fillin already. I was just trying to figure that out myself, how did he have about a two second lead, <laughs> already going towards the top of state curve for the first time at Cathal Lafferty there, sitting in a nice comfortable third position, once more at the moment behind Brian Duncanson, so looking good, then we've got Callum Patterson there in fourth, and that lead isn't quite as big as when we see it now, Duncan. No, it was just, uh, just Duncan Vincent having a senior moment there as up the inside goes Chris Cook of Callum Patterson but Joe couldn't do it there he couldn't get past Callum Patterson Callum a bit of a wily fox a good wet weather rider is Callum Patterson and also a good dry weather rider now so into the hairpin we have Greg Gilfillan and he doesn't mind that machine moving about and look at Brian Duncanson rocketing up towards the back of Cathal Lafferty there and Lafferty has been the man off the meeting when he breaks the hairpin but he's just taking his time to get used to this now has he got an issue Dennis there's Lafferty sitting up there coming at the hairpin having a look down at the side of the bike I wasn't too sure what was going on then, Dunk, for one second, but he's still managing to keep the bike running, but he could have some kind of problem going on. It's, yeah, there's uh, a leg coming off the side there. I don't think Laverty's 100% happy with that R6 Yamaha right now, as he proves me completely wrong and goes back up the side of Chris Cook before Butchers. But Cathal, Cathal Laverty is maybe in some sort of uh, mechanical issue here. Yeah, he's, he keeps looking down. He's, he's losing out on drive as well in places, Dunk. I don't know he managed to drive alongside Chris Cook there a little bit earlier on, but something definitely going wrong with uh, Cathal Laverty at yeah, the moment. Not, not aggressive on the bike, because supposing the way you don't want to be but doesn't even look like he's tucked in does he but Gilfillan's gone Duncan's in second then Cook then Laverty Patterson and the rest of them all come through let's keep our eyes on this white bike is he going to make a, a dart for the pit lane 
or are we going to see him continue through? But uh, we would expect that it would be a little bit further up than that. But Chris Cook on the Kawasaki away up the main straight. And Lavery stays on there. It could be an intermittent problem that he's got at the moment. But like I say, we, we saw him get up into second place and we would expect him to hold that. His form in the wet has been really, really good. But at the front, Greg Gilfinan, the only man to be lapping sub 58 seconds at the moment. A 57 free on the last lap. Stuart Jackson slithers up the inside of a rider in towards Clark. So that was number 23. He went past that was Michael Rigby. And he'll be happy with that. Jackson making a few positions up in these try rather tricky if you wait conditions. They've, they've not had a good deal of it the racers this weekend. It's been wet, dry, wet, dry, wet. You know, it's not been nice. Tell you, just looking at the time screens there, Duncan, who's making good progress is Grant Campbell from the back of the grid. Obviously, I've been on the floor yeah. in, the, in a bit of an incident. He was involved in earlier on. Grant Campbell already up in towards the top 10 doing a strong ride. Well noticed, Dennis Hobbs here. I wonder why you're pointing at that TV screen in front of us here. But yep, still at the front, though. It's uh, Greg O'Fillan going, look at Duxbury as well, just off the back of Angus Mearns. This is a fantastic debut for this man here. Getting some TV time there on the number 46. 48. 48, thank you. It looked like 46. On the number 48, R6 Yamaha. And yeah, there's Grant Campbell. Well picked up. He's just gone past Owen Fozard. Good scalp. Yeah, definitely. And Owen Fozard, obviously, he's still getting used to the 600. He's our reigning Formula 400 champion. I passed Owen Fozard and done film another week out on his bike, bicycle cycling about the place. So putting in the miles on the road bike, trying to get the fitness up. But yeah, Owen still getting to grips with the 600. But Grant Campbell, you're right, he has had a fantastic, fantastic race here starting at the back and he's made some good progress he's now on the back of I think that's Heritage just now as they come down through Butchers and up towards the John Iwish again Dennis is impressed with that spot aren't you? Yeah definitely yeah, Mark Heritage doing a strong ride as well Duncan we seem to have quite a few Kawasaki's out there at the sharp end doing a, a fantastic job Yeah the good thing about Gilfillan's bike is it's not green it's an orange one so it's very very easy for us to pick out but can Grant Campbell do Mark Heritage on the brakes to come towards the hip and here Campbell is looking a little bit racy here they both break for the hip and it's just uh, well Grant's got but some, uh, some demons of the hairpin but I think he's put them to rest yeah definitely looking looking smooth and strong like you say he's made progress from the very back of the field and in the wet conditions you, you know you get a lot of spray from your visibility is hard to see through and, uh, and doing a strong job and as we see Sam and Tassi coming up onto the start finish straight Oh, we've got a rider down. That's, oh, dear, it's James Duxbury, isn't it? Yeah, James has thrown that one away. It's uh, the seat curves there and he trudges away. You can hold your head up high, though. No, it's not, because he's just coming up the back straight there just now. It's a complete error by me. Give me a slap, Dennis. Thank you very much. It looked like his bike. It looked like his leathers, but uh, Duncan Vincent getting a little bit keen there. So we'll have to try and get an ID on that bike. Yeah, we'll try and uh, figure that out over the as the guys come over the start finish line, see if the TV screens make a move. We'll look back towards Heritage, Campbell, and Fozard again as they're going through Clark's corner, back down towards the hairpin. And uh, Owen Fozard just trying to hang on towards the back of these uh, guys. And like you say, Owen Fozard, we know he's a class act. He has won a lot of races in the Formula 400 category here at Nocula and was the champion last year over Tom Robinson. Yeah, but can Grant Campbell get past Mark Heritage? And Fozard won't like these guys being in front of him, but he's, uh, he's just going to try and chip, chip, chip away and see if we get on knocking the laps off here at Knock Hill and the, the track not really drying as quick as Joe Tanner predicted and who's this is this Shellcock is that Shellcock no it's not. it is yes sorry I'll just I'll calm down it's actually Stuart Jackson as well just behind there and these guys uh, just tippy toeing their way around but they've got Greg Gilfillan they're about to get a less than wet weather ride and look at that Gilfillan sits up and goes absolutely flying around outside them towards the, the hairpin Grant Campbell still behind Mark Hertis you still cannot get past yeah, he's, 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 he's managed to get onto the back wheel of Heritage there, but just can't find a way through. So, not sure what's going on. <laughs> I like that. Big shrug of the shoulders, shake of the head. Cool. Grant Campbell, he's, uh, he's going to have to have a pop here because the laps are ticking down. If he doesn't do it soon, he's never going to do it. But there goes Greg Gilfillan up the back straight. And then it's Rigby and Jackson, two back markers in between him. And you can see just at the back there, Brian Duncanson, as we follow Stuart Jackson. Stuart will want to try and get past. He's been doing a few track days to try and get that confidence back up after putting the thing down the road quite a few times but here comes this man, look at him he's a man on a mission, he's a man possessed yeah if you met him in the street you wouldn't think he'd say boo to a goose it's Greg Gilfillan as he comes through the hairpin on that Kawasaki, picks it up and accelerates hard and you can hear that thing absolutely howling up the main street it's a good win for Greg Gilfillan, he takes a checker flag to applause on the, the pit wall in second position we're going to have Brian Duncanson and Chris Cook does come home in third place Patterson, Mern, Shellcock with Heritage and Grant Campbell. Good seventh and eighth for those guys. We did lose Carfo Laverty in that one, unfortunately, so we'll find out hopefully from Joe Tanner what went wrong with him. So back down to Joe in the pit lane. Greg, the winner of the final 600 Superstock race. Wow, that was one of the best rides I've seen in a long, long time on TV and here. Um, we were upstairs in race control shouting, slow down, slow down, because you were nearly a second quicker than anybody. Yeah. I just put my head down and was having so much fun out there. I didn't even realise I had a big gap. 
I took a few looks behind me when I was coming out of the hairpin, but you can't really see if there's anyone right close to you. So you know, I seen uh, Duncan at the end of the pit lane try to tell me to slow down. So I kind of held back a little bit, but I was just having fun, I guess. I guess. Second place, uh, good points all this weekend. Um, I'm not going to bomb him up too much, but Greg was unbelievable in that race. Yeah, he got away early on and uh, I just couldn't come back to him, so I just had to settle for a second. Dodgy conditions to try to gather some points when you're leading the championship, isn't it? Uh, uh, conditions were fine there, but tyres were a wee bit worn after the kind of in-between race beforehand, so struggling for grip, a wee bit of duffus, and just thought I'd settle the kind of pace I was at, you know. And the third place man home, a great result result and some horrible conditions. Yeah it was, it was really hard, there was a lot of standing water so I caught second place about halfway through but just settled for third in the end so happy enough. Could you see Greg, the pace that he was setting at the front? I could but he, he did pull away, he rode really really well considering the conditions were so bad so. So the championship positions for the Super Stock sees Brian Duncanson still with a good commanding lead over Michael Robertson, Greg will fill up to third place with Callum Patterson and Chris Cook fourth and fifth, Sean will fill in sixth with Shellcock and Stanbury in eighth. That's all we have time for from the 600 Super Stocks and the 125s. We've had some great action, but please do join us later in the year for the final round from Knockhill Racing Circuit.